Well guys, welcome back to the studio. It's good back. to see you again. Yeah, guess who's back? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we're, we're dealing with another easy topic, right? One that's not gonna not cause any deal. sort of struggle or, or controversy. Um, we're talking about the, uh, the type of division that we are seeing in our churches right now. And um, I don't know if it's good news or bad news, but this division within church has been happening since the very first church. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has. In the, in the book of Acts, we see the church being divided between the conservative Jews and the liberal Jews, the Hellenistic Jews, mm -hmm. you know, who are more worldly and more yeah. integrated into their, the other, the values of the Hellenistic culture. We had um, later on, you know, there was division about whether or not to accept Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And then when you accept them in, how much of the Old Testament law do they have to follow? There was that division. And then you just look through Paul's letters and you see division at most mm -hmm. of the churches that he's writing to, except for the ones that are being persecuted. For some reason, those ones are too, they're too busy, they're too busy. Know, not dying, yeah. I guess, to, um, to, <laughs> to argue about, about small things. Yeah. Um, and even there, mm -hmm. like, like, like Philippi would be one I'd think of. Even there, you still had like little personality classes yeah. with, with some of the leadership. Mm -hmm. But the, the one I think that stands out to us most would probably be in... Uh, in Corinth, yeah, and specifically in, in yeah. First Corinthians, you know, he starts out his letter after giving thanks in his introduction. He says, you know, it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. Mm -hmm. What I mean is each of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Mm -hmm. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Mm -hmm. So here there wasn't, it wasn't just a vision, it was like, cult of personality yeah. type of divisions where people were lining up on different sides mm -hmm. based off of people probably with their own particular take mm -hmm. on Christianity and, mm -hmm. and maybe even on on uh, who Paul was and what right, his role right, was right. supposed to be at that church and this usurping that was has taken place. Does that remind you of, uh, of anything that we're going to It does sound a little familiar. <laughs> Are we talking about now or is this the first century? Yeah. I'm a little blurry well, the here. Names, the names are cool. Change you know. the names and yeah. it's the same. You know, I, I really was tempted to almost read this, stubbing it in with political names. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. was blank, you know, crucified for you? Mm -hmm. Were you baptized in the name of, hmm? You know, and, uh, yeah. you know, some people talk that way. And, you know, we're on social media a lot and maybe social media isn't is like the loud minority and a lot of Christians are more level headed. Yeah. But just to give you an idea, okay, here's a tweet by a, um, a very respectable Presbyterian minister. And most of his tweets get around like uh, 30 replies or so. Okay. This tweet, it's just 11 words. Are you ready for this? Inside the church, we should be making room for political differences. That's the tweet. Mm -hmm. 729 replies. Let, let me read some of them to you. <laughs> okay, these are people, I've got to remember that and not be mean-spirited about this, but I, I have to be honest, it's, I have to, you know, I have to check my own, my own self with this. Yeah. This is like saying the Israelites should make room for their body-sacrificing Canaanite neighbors. You should know better. I used to look up to you. Hmm. Let me read the original tweet again. Inside the church, we should be making room for political differences. Yeah. Okay. Next, next reply. Can you imagine being a pastor in the 1930s and saying, inside the church, we should be making room for unrepentant Nazis? I can't either. Wow, well, they're just going all over the place here. <laughs> you think it would just be one side, but it's not. Um, you... <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. Okay. Uh, Christians have no grounds to support socialist political parties. We've seen what this, this ideology has done in the 20th century. So what I'm getting from a lot of this, as I think back on our first conversation, is that passage of James is being quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. And I think we're struggling with that concept <laughs> right now of having our listening ears on and yeah. actually having this dialogue. Yeah, yeah, I've got a couple more. Um, oh goodness. Sorry. Oh, this is <laughs> I great. didn't realize. This, I, 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 just, I just want us to have a clear picture of, you okay. know, it's because maybe this is a loud minority, but it's also the rhetoric we get, you know, from some of our pastors and yeah. from some political leaders. There's a, just an entrenchment that's taking place. Interesting. Political yeah. differences, in quote, 
cannot include advancing white supremacy, misogyny, homophobia, or the desire to separate immigrant children from their parents. It's interesting that this phrase is just saying we need to make room for political differences, and yet both sides feel like... Um, A qualifier, qualifier, qualifier. Yeah, yeah. It, it feel like it's almost like they're just working to justify why they should not, should not make room. Why there should be division. I'm justifying the division that I've allowed in my own heart. Right, and why there mm. should be no... Uh, no um, conversation about it. Mm. Like the discussion is over before it even began. Mm. Now this, this is the last one, just to tell you how, how, how far th this goes. Again, let me read the original quote one more time. Inside the church, we should be making room for political differences. How telling is it that, name of the pastor, um, suffering from pancreatic cancer, spends his time trying to get conservative evangelicals to stay home or vote left. And then somebody replied to him, he has become demonic as he finishes out his last days. I guess Satan can use him for a few more years. What? Wow. Uh... I think that what's heartbreaking about a lot of this is wow. even as I was thinking about coming to this conversation, when I looked at the example of Jesus Christ, mm. there was no one that he wasn't willing to sit at the table with. Mm. Um, right. Pharisees, Sadducees, sinners, tax collectors, mm -hmm. all were welcome to come and have fellowship with him. Now, there was, of course, the go and sin no more. And there's that dialogue, and we want correct doctrine and beliefs. Mm. But I think of the fundamental principle of Christ setting that example for us. Mm. And when I hear these divisions, I just keep thinking back to the example that he gave us in his own life and, and how can we follow that? And I, I don't know how you can argue against that at that point then, because really all we're saying is just like Christ, all are welcome here to sit at the table. We're not saying we affirm everything. We're not even saying I agree with everything you're saying. All I'm literally saying is I'm willing to sit at a table with you. Right. You know, yeah. and and I think by doing so, when we do that, we're recognizing individuals as, first of all, people who Christ has come to die for and has mm -hmm. deemed lovable. Um, mm -hmm. We're calling out the humanity in you and saying, by sitting at a table with you, I might disagree on all of these things, but we share a commonality that we are all created in the image of God mm -hmm. and we are all standing at the foot of the cross in need of his redemption. That's our commonality that we share. Um, that's that, that's hard for me when I see division like that, because I feel like it goes in the face of what, what Christ himself was trying to do by coming and dying for us. Hmm. What do y'all think? I would agree. Um, it's, it's been such an interesting uh, time, and it will continue to be that uh, in the days to come, because, and just like we see uh, in the Word, you know, going back to the first century, and, and, and we see it today, um, you know, neither candidate died for your sins. And so, you know, if 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 my allegiance to Christ Jesus um, isn't enough for you and, and you want to know my political affiliation over that, then there's there, there's an inherent problem. There's a problem. So if the Christ in me can't resonate or connect with the Christ in you and you're more worried about something of this world then it's it's already <laughs> there's already a problem, and so I, I think that what what we're seeing is there are a lot of people who believe that their Christianity coincides with their political affiliation, and and we see that um, we see how how hurtful uh, that is, how divisive that is, and on, on both sides, whether that's far left or the or the far right, um, it's incorrect because truth truth be told, you know, when you're standing on the word of God. Uh, and, and, and Jesus teaches us this, at some point in time, you're gonna step on everyone's toes. The Pharisees couldn't stand Jesus. The Sadducees couldn't stand Jesus. The Jews couldn't stand Jesus. The Roman soldiers couldn't stand Jesus. Judas couldn't stand Jesus, and he was one of the 12. So, I mean, so, so all that to say, you know, at some point in time when you are standing on, on God's word, the unmitigated, unchanging, 
gospel, somebody's going to get offended. Sure. And so if we call ourselves Christians and, and we believe um, that we're doing, you know, what Jesus would do, but our values or, or our platforms directly align with that of either side, well, then we're not standing on the word of God because there are some things that, some, that, that, that one side has right and there are some things that they're wrong and vice versa. Anything of this world is tainted because we're all born into sin. Yes. You know, and yeah. so being a Christian, you're always going to find yourself almost kind of like on an island of Patmos, like by yourself. And I didn't even do anything. And But I'm, <laughs> so, you know. So what you're too. saying, what I think of too right away, um, I believe it's Ephesians 2, where it talks about Christ mm -hmm. breaks down the barrier of division, yeah. mm -hmm. that he is our peace. He is our unifier. Mm -hmm. Um that's that's where I mean, he breaks down the barrier yeah. of division. I think that's yeah. exactly what the, the Bible verse says. And um, I think that as believers, especially in this day and age, we recognize that division has been something that we've struggled with. Right. But I think the, the exhortation we get from Scripture is to lean in and to trust Christ enough to be able to unify that. I think we're so short minded thinking I cannot have peace with this person. We are too, you know, opposed. Our opinions are too opposite of each other. Mm. And I wonder if we're almost belittling how powerful Christ's ability to break down that barrier is then at that point. If we can both agree to stand on the footing of Christ as our peace. Right, right. because what we have in common is the need for Christ. Yes. What we have in common is that we are both sinners uh -huh. and whatever our level of self-righteousness is, it's not yeah. enough. I remember an illustration used in college of, of someone who's speaking to us at, at Howard Payne University uh, college name drop, sorry. And uh, he was saying, you know, if I'm trying to get across the Grand Canyon and I run and I'm and I jump as far as I can. And I'm looking and I'm looking at somebody else who jumped right before me and he, he chose one of our more heavy set professors as his example of comparing himself with. And, and he was like, as and as I'm falling, I say, at least I got further than Dr. Alvin Sean. <laughs> Still like dead. Still, still, <laughs> still dead, still nowhere near yep. getting yeah. across that Grand Canyon. And we're not we're not starting from that place of humility, of mm -hmm. humility of saying, you know, what what binds us together is we both have a need for a savior. And, you know, the interesting thing about that Ephesians passage is not only does it say, you know, he he made the two into one. Mm -hmm. He took he took the hostility mm -hmm. and made peace. Yes. And all the tweet was trying to say is we should be showing that peace. That, that's that's what I think, but not only that, but then it goes on to say that in in uh, through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Mm. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens mm. with the saints and members of the household of God. Saying mm. now your primary identity, your primary citizenship, is God's kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm heavenly citizenship mm. being our primary source of identity, not to negate other citizenships. And, and we celebrate right. that, mm -hmm. but in order of our priority and how we are able to find unity in the body of Christ, right. that's where we find it. Mm -hmm. We find right. it in our heavenly citizenship. Right. So if, if our, you know, political affiliation comes before our identity in Christ, that's a problem. If, if a yard sign or a certain colored hat or a certain colored t-shirt um, shows your identity before that of Christ Jesus, the, the God wrapped in flesh, God's only son who came and, and died for us and, and rose again three days later. If that's not enough for us to be able to come and sit at a table and talk about these issues as brothers and sisters in Christ and, and what you know, Christ's transcendence on our community, on public policy, on et cetera, et cetera, looks like together, then, then, then we'll forever be stagnant yeah. as the body of Christ. And so, you know, there are so many people who believe that, that their Christianity uh, is one with their political affiliation and truth be told. Um, I don't, do, do you all know Jesus' uh, uh, political affiliation? I, I, you know, I think that was undisclosed. I think it was third party or something. Okay, okay. Y'all okay. know, how, yeah, I know how, uh, how much he paid in taxes. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just he, curious. He's, I do yeah, know that he's the taxes. ruler of it heaven, is. though. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, I think that's yeah. where yeah. it comes back down to, is mm -hmm. that it's... When you're the Lord of Lords, you don't have to have a political <laughs> party. 
and, and, and you know, but I mean, we don't ever see, you know, and from, from Jesus to, to the apostles to, you know, you don't necessarily see people taking one side or one stance as it has to do with politics. Like I am this right. and, and this is of God. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not true. Yeah, that's not true. And as Christians, we're operating out of a certain lens that we're able to prayerfully have spirit, you know, discernment, a great sense of spiritual discernment on what is right in every issue and what is wrong in every issue, what is right in every instance, every incident, what is right and what is wrong. And, and, and sometimes, you know, we see as humans, there's partiality that we give to say it side based on our affiliation. We, we fail to see the wrong in our side that we support and vice versa. And if that's the struggle, then we'll mm -hmm. never make progress. But when you're looking at the world through the lens of, of a Christian, of a Christ follower, then you're able to see both sides are tainted. Yeah. So let's come to the table. And let's 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 because I know you say you're a Christian over here and I know you say you're a Christian over here. And, I, and, I, and I'm trying my best every day to be a Christian right here in the middle. Let's come together yeah. and let's make progress. In right. the name let's of Christ, under the banner Amen. of Christ. Amen. Right. So let me throw out a question to both of you and see what y'all think. I, I have heard, and I'm sure you have as well, people say something to the extent of, you cannot be a Christian and believe <laughs> or support X, Y, Z or things like that. Huh. Really putting qualifiers on what it means in itself to be a believer. What do you say when you see people saying that or espousing beliefs that kind of qualify what it means to be a Christian? I bite my tongue. What do you say, Mike? <laughs> you know, I think it's interesting. All throughout uh, the Word of God, all throughout the Bible, we see different cases and different patients, if you would. You know, we see we see Moses, who was a murderer, but was was used by God to do this. Old Testament, let's go New Testament. We see a tax collector who was, we see a prostitute who, so, so, so when we make qualifiers based on, you can't be a Christian if, I mean, that's inherently wrong. That's not true because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. And so to say that is, is to then say that, well, you can't be saved because you did that. You got, you got an abortion, you can't be saved. That's evil, you can't be a Christian. How can, how can you, how can you, LGBTQIA, you can't be. You can't, you can't. But that's not our place as Christians to say that. Mm -hmm. It's not our place as Christians to judge. That's not our place, <laughs> that's not. So we can't put a ceiling on God. We can't put God in a box because we know that God can do anything because God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why we love and praise and worship and live for this God, the most high God, not, 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 not a lowercase g, yeah. capital. And so, so, so when we say those things, then that directly goes against the same Christianity that, that we claim that we are a part of mm -hmm. because God saved you from filling the blank. God saved me from filling the blank. And it can be a plethora of different things. Yeah. But the bottom line is that all of us were completely incapable of our own redemption, that we Definitely. all stand equal at the foot of the cross, Sinners. that we all are dependent on him for our, not only our redemption, but our, our, our redemption, you know, of mm -hmm. our transformation of mm -hmm. followers in his kingdom and able to participate in that, that all is in the work of, of him, not yeah. in the work of us. Yeah. Yeah. When we're saying you can't be a Christian and do this, what we're doing is we're making our, our own definition of what the impardonable sin is. Mm -hmm. And That's from good. what I get from scripture, the impardonable sin was looking Jesus in the face and saying, you are of the devil. The impardonable sin was looking at God in his expression of himself through Christ and his love for us and not being able to recognize that that was who he was. Yeah. And instead of attrib attributing the exact opposite. That mm -hmm. that was a point of, if you got to that point, there's no coming back. Which mm -hmm. really kind of says, that's where we stand too. We stand, any, we don't compromise the gospel. And yeah. when people do come mm -hmm. and compromise who, who Jesus Christ was or anything mm -hmm. like that, yeah, we can say, oh, you've crossed that line. Yeah, now. yeah, okay, okay. Now we, <laughs> now we really do have to not break yeah. bread together, and, yeah. and we'll, right. we'll still have talks, but it's gonna. And be And we'll a still point. love, but yeah. you know, but because yeah. we, from a distance. 
but but every other sin you know even and you know there is there's something happening right now as we get close to the election of people are again doing what what christians often do which is which is saying which sins are the worst mm-hmm. yeah. and which ones are not as bad and we're sitting and while we're my sins out. are at the bottom of the list yeah, just so you know <laughs> yeah yeah and and as we you know as we as we point out hey this is this is the one that you are struggling with mm-hmm. then suddenly we're, we're communicating that this is the unpardonable sin mm-hmm. if if you vote blue or red in this election you know whichever one it is you vote that that you know we need to excommunicate you like yeah. and that's that some tweets were saying that yeah in reply so you know it's, it's so interesting um we encourage everyone to to vote and to be active politically it is uh your duty uh, as an american citizen and we want your voice to be heard um at the same time i think people need to understand that your your vote is not your your hope your hope is not in that candidate to come and be your savior because neither candidate is going to do that i just (laughs) <laughs> we need right. to be clear right. about no this. No political party will either. It's not, it's not no ideology. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm just that's not that's not the case. And I I know you know I'm director of public policy. It's my job <laughs> to watch every news source. <laughs> I see the propaganda. I see the advertisements, and my mind is blown. <laughs> like it, it is it is blown at the they, narratives that are being created mm-hmm. on both sides. Of, of 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 the line. They're almost like, weaponizing hope, saying, "I'm definitely. I'm your hope. I'm going to give this to you now." When definitely. we look at scripture, it's pretty clear our hope is in heaven. That right. this is where we go for hope. Right. right, and and anybody who's trying to guarantee that you are going to have a better future because of X Y Z, that's well, a lie. James calls that pride. Mm. Mm. You know that. Come now, you Ouch. say <laughs> today and tomorrow we're going to go to this place yeah. and make such and such a business, and we're going to make a profit. You know, if the Lord wills, which party is saying this was what will happen if the Lord wills? Mm-hmm. Neither is because they don't want to sound weak or who who knows, like who knows how how the, you know, advertising behind that actually works and this, the psychology behind that works. But yeah. nobody's really saying that. Yeah. And I love that about my father. My father is, is running from air uh, in Mansfield. And, um, you know, one thing he says is God's will be done. Mm-hmm. How, that, and that's it. If, if if the Lord allows it, it was it was God's plan from the beginning. And if not, God has something better, something greater. Yeah. And there's no there's no losing, there's no loss when you're walking with Christ. And I just think that if more uh, of our candidates uh, had that type of of, of attitude uh, when it comes to an election, when it comes to policy changes, when it comes to constituency, when it comes to differences across party lines and ideology. I think we'd be in a better place. It's a humble God's attitude. will be done. Yeah. Not if, you know, I, right. I don't even want to get too specific, but God's will be done. And if the person, if, if the political leader can be okay with that, then I just believe that his or her constituents will be okay with that as well. Because at the end of the day, the Lord has the final say. Nobody's going to make this, you know, COVID-19 go away. No one has that power. No one has that power. Um, so neither side can make it go away. All right. So when it comes, you know, oh my gosh, every issue, I'll just say that nobody has the power to just do away with it. Right. But we know who has the power. Right. Right. To change it. And our hope is in the Lord. I'm not telling you not to vote. Vote. Right. Be active. Do that. But understand that our hope is not in a man or a woman. Right. Or a political party. Right. Our hope is in the Lord. Right. And there's there's no solution to the brokenness and the fallenness of humanity. Mm-hmm. No legislation that we can pass, no policy that we can support that is going to solve that. Mm-hmm. There's no issue that if we gain victory over that issue, isn't going We've to raise arrived. a whole bunch of other <laughs> issues. We talked about it yesterday. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, there's going to be a lot more babies. <laughs> Which that's going to be a yeah. whole other issue with mm-hmm. a whole other group of needs. Mm-hmm. Teaser for our next video. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and we are, I mean, you know, we affirm a pro-life stance and we say we are thankful Absolutely. for those who do choose life. And, and, you know, that goes into a different rabbit trail. Mm-hmm. We don't want to go down too much right now. But <laughs> like you said, it's recognizing that no one policy is going to bring about the kingdom of God on earth. 
It's true. And I, I think I was yesterday, I was telling you, David, that that really solidified for me when I uh, really started to recognize that my hope was going to be more in heaven um, when my daughter had an incurable condition that's mm. not going to get fixed on earth. Mm. And when yeah. I had a, my, my child suddenly, you know, looking at her and recognizing, okay, heaven, this is where our hope is. That really mm. transformed my entire perspective as I entered into the world of motherhood nine years ago, mm. um, was just recognizing that the world is broken and the Lord is going to mm. redeem it. And I'm happy to be able to be a part of that, mm -hmm. but also continuously yearning for heaven, recognizing that no policy is going to fix what's wrong with her now. No mm. politician, mm. no platform right. is going right. to come and do this. Mm. My hope is in heaven and heaven alone now. Mm -hmm. And while I happily live in America and will work and will mm. vote and do yeah. all the things here to make sure to spread his kingdom on earth now, right. we got to wait till the end for yeah. the ultimate hope. That's yeah. where right. it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I, I hear, Dr. King's voice in my head. I just, I may not get there with you, <laughs> but we as a people will will get to the promised land. And I, I'm just, I am convinced that he was not talking about arriving to a certain place on earth. Right. He wasn't. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the night before his death. You know, I think he knew that that was coming. Um, the eschaton, you know, so it's it, it's hard to to stay up in up in the you know some people think that that's high up in the clouds, but truth be told, um, when we think about what is to come after our life on earth, that is what should inspire the way that we live on earth. Yeah. When we think about what is to come, when we look out at the world and we see how messed up this thing is, that should further inspire us to put our hope in the Lord because this will not be fixed this way or that way. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I need you. And yeah. scripture does that too. I mean, Paul tells us don't grow weary. He encourages us mm -hmm. to continue doing well. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, we talked about this in the last video, but just following the lamb's agenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. just to keep hammering that over and over again mm -hmm. is that we don't follow the donkey or the elephant. We follow the lamb. Yeah. And yeah, that, that is where the Christian unity is found. And that's where we're able to find commonality enough to share a pew, a table, whatever it is, um, following, agreeing to follow a lamb's agenda. Um, I think that's, to me, also one of the be beautiful things about Christianity is that as an American living in 2020, I can still share in commonality with somebody living in a totally opposite place of the world, mm -hmm. um, totally different life, culture, and everything. Mm -hmm. But that commonality we share in the right. lamb and our identity yeah. there. Right. That's right. so beautiful. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most moving and compelling things to me about Christianity yeah. is, is that commonality we share across every tongue, tribe, and nation yeah. that we worship the lamb and that he is our source. So, you know, as we talk about fulfilling the lamb's agenda mm. and as we, as we bring up Paul as an example, you know, I'm reminded of first Corinthians nine where for Paul, the agenda is the gospel. Yeah. You know, the, the solution mm. to be all these other people who we could be following is we follow Christ. Mm. Not just we follow Christ, but we preach Christ and him crucified. And that offends both sides, like you were yeah. saying, Mike. Mm -hmm. But then we get to a place where Paul says, you know what, the message is going to offend, but I'm going to do everything I can to mm. not offend mm. so that more ears are open to the gospel. To use his mm. own words, to the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. And I'd just like to challenge us and challenge anyone who watches this video to ask, would Paul have a political sign in his front yard? Would he wear a hat or a shirt if he thought that would close the ears of certain people who would immediately assume something of him? and keep him from being able to share the gospel. Mm. You know, becoming all things to all people is the Lamb's agenda. Mm. And how do we do that? What does that look like? Those are questions we need to be asking anytime we're engaging political issues on social media. What do you mm. guys think? I mean, to me, that is the epitome of what it looks like to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Of mm. saying, I will forfeit my own personal liberties here to 
reach across this barrier between us, whether it be political, mm -hmm. um, economic, uh, geographic, whatever it is, I'm going to reach out because I'm following Christ and he has told me to love you as I love myself. I'm going to reach across and tell you about the Christ who has loved me so well. I'm going to reach across all these things that, like we talked about in the last video, it's it's loving your neighbor well. It's, mm. it's you know, Micah 6, 8, it's, it's being kind. That mm. That is literally the kind thing to do is to mm. say, I'm going to make sure that in no way am I a hindrance to you being able to hear the gospel of Christ because I recognize that above anything else, that's what I need. And I recognize above everything else, that's what you need too. This is what we need for our, our, our own healing, our world, our culture. It needs Christ and Christ alone. Mm -hmm. And so to resign or, or give up my own personal liberties to be able to make sure that you can hear that message of Christ that is loving your neighbor as yourself at that point. And it's costly. Yeah but I think it's what we're called to do. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's important that, that we understand that uh, Jesus Christ doesn't have on a red hat and he's not a police officer, doesn't have on a rainbow shirt. Christ Jesus is standing at the door knocking. Mm -hmm. It's not a political issue. And so, if you love the Lord, like I love the Lord, even though we think differently, or we see the world differently as we should as humans, because God created us all, even though we're made in his image, we're all unique and different, which is beautiful. Amen. That should be enough for us to come together yeah. as family, as members of the body of Christ, to hold hands, to lock arms, to stand together and to bring about the world that Christ would have us live in, mm -hmm. to be used as vessels yes. for the Most High God. And if I'm doing anything that is going to divide us as opposed to build a bridge for us to come together and for those who come after us to have a smooth paved path, if we can't blaze this trail together in a time such as this, mm -hmm. Well, we sure, sure need it. Are we really doing what God has called us to do as Christians? Yeah. Right. And sitting at the table, allowing people to still follow their convictions, allowing them to say, we're going to have some differences and setting the example of being okay in that space. Mm. Um, what do you think about that? Um, I think, I think it's hard. Yeah. Mm. I think it's hard because there's so much emotion involved mm -hmm. and there are many genuinely righteous concerns. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people who are pro-life, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to argue with you about that at all. <laughs> you know, I'm on your side for that. Um, but, but people who have compassion for the, the underprivileged and the marginalized mm -hmm. and those who've been you know, who've suffered from racism their entire lives, you know, having compassion on them, I'm on your side, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think, I think the real challenge is for a lot of believers, there's a, one issue mm -hmm. that it is just, a, a, it's against their conscience to vote against that issue. Mm -hmm. And for some people, the issue is abortion because they believe that all life matters. They believe mm -hmm. that all lives are important. They believe that everyone was made in the image of God. For some people, that is, is our government going to deal with systemic racism because we believe that all lives matter, because we believe we were all created in the image of God? There's so much that we're saying that is alike. And the one difference is, which was, which is that issue for you? Mm -hmm. And to that, I would say, it seems to me from scripture, and I'm open to critique on this, but it seems to me from scripture that scripture allows room for those differences and that Paul would say, vote your conscience. Mm -hmm. You know, voting against your conscience would be a sin. Mm -hmm. But then don't look at another person who also has something that has a biblical value that they're standing on, mm -hmm. who votes differently from you, because for them to vote the other way would be voting against their conscience. Mm -hmm. It's 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 tricky. It is tricky. And we're, 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 asking, we're asking ourselves to say, is this sort of thing that we can die to ourselves in without compromising the truth of scripture? But the reason it's tricky, again, going back to the beginning, is because no political party is the same as the Lamb's agenda. No party is going to agree with all our issues. If you look at our public policies, 
you we could go okay that one's red that one's blue that one's red that one's blue and we have to you know we have to fight for what the word says and that's what we'll be doing in january with the next uh, legislative section as it comes up but my yes. bring, bringing up that point a lot of people are putting stress on voting but aren't there other things we can be doing that can be making more of a difference yeah. if there's something that that's we're passionate question. about definitely there, there are so many uh, other things uh, that we could be doing besides posting memes on social media. Uh, and make, memes make you feel good, though. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they give you I, that self-righteous you know, like, little zinger. I, yeah, yeah uh -huh. I, and, and I get it. You know, I understand, but there are so many um, practical things we could be doing if if you do uh, stand on on the, the pro-life uh, issue. You stand if you stand on it. And that's what you want to support. Well, okay, well, let's talk about practicality for people who feel like they don't have any other option. Let's talk about the church and let's talk about the church's openness to open its arms and to accept that young woman or that young man or that young family and help them raise that child as opposed to shaming them. So there, there are deeper issues at hand. If we want to, you know, so before we demonize, you know, the LGBTQIA uh, community, oh, do they have a place in the church to talk about their struggles mm -hmm. or, to, or to talk about, you know, what they're going through without being shamed? Yeah. Because if that door has been closed, then where do we leave them? And so, you know, before we demonize people, you know, as members of the body of Christ and a, a, as members of the universal church of Christ church, we have to be able to have these conversations and to stop turning people away and shaming them. And then all of a sudden make it a political issue, right? And then they're the enemy, right? Now they're on, now they're yeah. on. No, that because it can't be that way. If right. we're members of the body of Christ, these are real issues. We are real people and we all struggle with different things. None of us are perfect. You mm -hmm. know, we just do a better job of hiding it uh, than to some our other detriment. people. I mean, Definitely. I think that's the problem with a lot of this is we kind of do have a rosy picture in our church pews and it's it, you can't come it's out and real. talk about the things. That's if, that's, if you if you struggle with something that is anathema on one side, you just. Our churches need to be a safe place to be able to talk about these things and, and a place to be able to share your burdens and feel like people will come alongside you and mm -hmm. carry that with you, not shame you for those being your burdens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and we can affirm each other's convictions. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be on one side and say, well, I, I realize where you're coming from this angle. I realize it's because you care about human life mm -hmm. and I do, too. And maybe the issue for me is a different issue, but we can both agree that God's word says we're made in his image and we can care about human life. Yeah. And we can we can celebrate the way the spirit is working in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we that we think that other issue isn't important. Right. Or that we're not a Christian because we don't care about that other issue. It's trusting Christ to be that unifier or breaking down the dividing wall of hostility again. Mm -hmm. It's I think it really does come down to are we going to lean into what scripture says enough to actually trust that Christ will unify? Because in our minds maybe these issues are insurmountable. Yeah. Trust Christ more. You know, mm -hmm. see what he can do because he is mighty. Yeah. Now when we think about, you know, Christ, you know, God is love. Mm -hmm. Jesus truly exhibited love. And so one thing that I think we, we make the mistake of is, is believing that, you know, if, if you love me, then I'm beyond reproach. Mm -hmm. If you love me, then you can't you can't call me out. You, you can't be honest with me or tell me about myself. That's not but that's not real love. Mm -hmm. And so if we watch a man be murdered by police and that was just unnecessary and we call out injustice, that doesn't mean that I'm against the police. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I hate police. That means I don't want to die when I get pulled over. That's what that means. That's it. You so, so so we have to stop going to extremes yeah. on both sides. Yes. If I if I love you, you know what that was wrong, and you can say that there are police officers who will say that was wrong, and then there are awesome police officers. God bless the police. We need the police. Like I mean, I would you know I mean you know you know what yeah. I'm saying. So we don't have to go to these extremes. Yeah. And say you're either on the right or the left, but we we have to be able. To, to dissect every issue by issue, we have to state facts and we have to think about what doing justice and loving kindness and walking humbly with our God, Micah 6, 8, what it looks like in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. And we have to do that with compassion 
and with love for one another. I'm not demonizing you. I don't I don't hate you, yeah. but let's talk about this. And how can we make it better for all of us? I think yeah. one of the ways we can really fight against the demonization of the other side, whatever that is, is also just really stopping with the um just um dehumanization of others like it's we you know we almost add like ours like the left the right this person that person right. like, individuals with names with dignity mm-hmm. who who have families and stuff i think that's one practical way is just engaging at a person to person level mm-hmm. and listening to people and not listening to to platforms as much or not just automatically saying this person is this platform mm-hmm. but actually engaging and hearing Right. Who they are. Right. And Each individual, what, is, what are the issues that are important for them and mm-hmm. why? Instead mm-hmm. of just, well, I've heard what you are and now I, I know why I'm against you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of starting with the common ground. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, it goes back to our, our, our last video. Like we said, you know, your life experiences, that's your testimony, that's your reality. And that's what causes you to, you know, reality is, is your perception. So that's what causes you to think the way you do. Then when you hear uh, my reality and my perception, you would see why it's completely different, you know? Mm-hmm. So I would love to be able to call the police and believe that they'll help me and not treat me as the, as the criminal when I've called them, which has happened before in my life. Whereas you've had completely different experiences. That would make sense why we see things differently. Right. And my brother in Christ, I love you, you love me. Let's talk about it. And there's yeah. a bigger issue at hand. How do we come together? Absolutely. It's not political. Right. But yeah. you come together. Exactly. And and you can do that because of your unity in Christ. Exactly. And we it, you know, it's some hard conversations. Yeah. We we have to have but 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 as members of the body of Christ, um, you know, at living in such a divisive and divided time like we're living in, we have to open up the doors of the church, literally. We have to talk about everything that people are facing. Mm-hmm. Because you know, in the church, and honest conversations, recognizing right. that the people who are facing it are the people in the church too. Right, you know, right. That these aren't just issues that affect right a, a random number. You know, no, <laughs> like these yeah. are we are real people mm-hmm. with real issues, and especially for the I, I don't have children yet. When I think about my children who are coming up, they I want them to be able to talk to me about anything, mm-hmm. not even just what they're going through, but what they heard at school. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? And how do we have an honest conversation about that? Because if they don't learn it from us as parents, which is your ministry starts in your household, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. if, 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 if we can't have honest conversations about the things that they're hearing, they will be exposed to it by the world. So if we can't do that in the church for other people, whether they're Christians or not, if we can't be here, standing here with with open arms to hear them out and and, and have compassion Mm -hmm. and be honest with ourselves and with them to say that, you know what, I've struggled with X as well, or I don't understand your struggle with this, but let's find somebody who does. And how can I love you through that? And we accept you and and we're going to work with you and we're going to be with you and stand with you. And you're going to fall sometimes, but but I fall over here. This is my thing. This is, well, this is my vice. I got one. You know, sometimes I, you know, I, everybody has something because we've all sinned and come Absolutely. short of the glory of God. And that's worth bonding over. Yeah. Yeah. Like nothing else. Mike, <laughs> Mike, you just paraphrased this passage. If I could make this our, our closing word. Yeah. It's uh, Colossians chapter three, starting with verse 12. It says, mm-hmm. put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. Mm. I heard you mention that a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Kindness. Katie, you said that about three minutes ago. Humility. Meekness. Mm. And patience. Mm. Bearing with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, there's a lot of complaints we have against each other right mm-hmm. now. Forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, mm. so you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony where we're asking God to help us to have that harmony. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, I'm going to challenge myself and you guys and people watching this video. Let's, mm-hmm. let's memorize this passage mm-hmm. and say it to ourselves. Anytime we're about to engage in a political conversation. Yeah. And remember that in that conversation, let's put on compassion, mm-hmm. kindness, humility, patience. I think it would change a lot. The kingdom of God. Yeah. It would be amazing. Yeah. I think so. I think so. And there's never been a better time.
Amen. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, it's a great time to shine. Great time. I mean, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, like yesterday. And so, you know, God is good. And, 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 and God has given us room to grow, but room to fall and to get back up. We're so grateful for God's grace and mercy. Amen. And if the Lord can have grace and mercy for a sinner like me, I won't talk about you all, but like me, I can have the same kind of compassion for others. Mm -hmm. And whatever they're struggling with on this journey called life, we can stand there and be there for each other as members of the body of Christ. I might have to lean on you sometime, but you might have to lean on me. Or we might have to lean on each other. Hobble along together. That's We've it. got it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.